In this video, I'll chronicle my efforts to creating a vase like the one shown on the right here in red uh, using SolidWorks. Uh, it turned out to be a, not a trivial process, but uh, doable anyway. So uh, without further ado, I will go ahead and show uh, what I did. So here I am in SolidWorks, and it shows one that I've already created, and I'll walk through the steps. The thing that is challenging, or was most challenging, was the notion of how to create these veins or ribs to taper at the bottom and top uh, such that they uh, you know basically fade away uh, it's easy enough to create sharp edge ones but I like the taper effect so here we go uh, I'll do a file new create a vase shape with um, a revolve boss base Those of you who are familiar with SolidWorks, this should be uh, quite uh, quite easy to reproduce. And I'll create a bottom as well. And let's create a spline that is the outer shape here. That uh, probably be okay. I don't want it quite so curvy. And I'll give it a dimension. Uh, not there. Let's dimension the vertical. Uh, six uh, inches. Okay, great. So here we go. Let's uh, revolve it around the, the middle. And there is a vase shape that uh, can be developed. Obviously quite different than the one at Thingiverse, but still, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, next thing I want to do is to shell it. I will not retain the shell, but you'll see why I want to do it now rather than later. Uh, give it a 0.2 inch thickness, wall thickness, just shelling from the top. And uh, what I'll do now, I want to retain the interior geometry uh, so that I can do a revolve cut later. So I'll go to sketch, another sketch on the front plane. Let's do a cutaway view so we can see what's going on inside. And here we are. Um, I'll do an intersection curve between the inside uh, of the bulb. And uh, let's draw some additional lines that will be needed for the revolve operation. Over from the top, stopping around the middle, let's get it to lock at a horizontal, which it just did go down to the middle bottom right there and then over to the corner so that'll be my shape uh, just FYI notice that there's this unwanted line over here that's part of the intersection curve I need to get rid of that or it will create trouble later when I try to revolve so I'm done with that and I'm actually done with the sketch I'll save this for later um, if I suppress the shell, which I want to do, I don't want it shelled right now, notice it also suppresses the uh, sketch that I just created. So what I'll do is click on that, I'll do an edit, copy, and it edit, paste. And the copy is not uh, suppressed. I'm going to rename it to uh, copy of interior so I know what it is later. Okay, we'll turn off the uh, cutaway view and let's do some uh, uh, helix or helix uh, creation. That'll be uh, controlling how the, um, the veins travel. So I'll create yet another sketch on the bottom. I'll put a circle down there centered on the, the vase and I'll make it big enough to cover if you see it's larger than the uh, the overall size of the vase so that's all good that's done for that sketch let's create an axis in the middle uh, which we'll use now and later uh, centered at that point and we're at a right angle to the top plane okay so there's my axis and you We'll use that for any number of things. Um, 
okay uh, let's create a helix or a helix um, go to curves helix and spiral uh, right now it's going down let's reverse the direction and go up now one of the things that I learned uh, later when I try to do a um, a surface it's based on this helix if I have less than one revolution um, it basically doesn't um, doesn't work I don't know if it's a bug in SolidWorks I like to I have to keep revolutions to one or more but I don't want it such a steep angle so instead of letting it a, a pitch in revolution I'll use height in revolution and instead of a height of 8 I'll make it like a height of uh, 25 which will drag it out and make it a much less uh, radical uh, angle for the vein might even go up to 30 let's use 30 I think that's more what I want okay there's my helix and uh, we need one more sketch let's go over to sketch again sketch on the bottom and we'll create a line that will be swept around uh, controlled by the path of that um, helix let's find my little marker I gotta find my yellow point this is not a requirement but it is helpful uh, I think I saw one a moment ago there's one nope there they are all right finally I found one I'm gonna go through there go out beyond the edge and done uh, finish that sketch and uh, go up into surfaces uh, you, if it's not if this is not turned on you right click here and turn on the surfaces tab we're going to do a swept surface the sketch 5 is the thing we're sweeping uh, th this is the path and you see how it creates that swept shape it's very pretty I'll accept that uh, next I want the intersection between the two between that and the outer uh, part of the face of the uh, the vase and that's what I'll uh, sweep my veins over so I'll go up to tools sketch tools intersection curve that's the intersection between these two I'll accept that accept it finish the sketch and now I have that line I don't need to look at this anymore I'm gonna hide it and I'll hide the helix as well okay so now I've got this lovely shape here that follows uh, along the outside of the vase um, let's create the shape that I want to go uh, you know along that path uh, create a sketch up on the top um, hopefully that put it where I want it I think I want a center line I'm gonna have that go from here to the intersection point there so that'll be my reference next we'll create a three-corner rectangle and we'll constrain it in just a moment one I make it approximate I don't like to use the automatic sometime um, and now I'll make this a shift click on this make them parallel that's fine and then I'm gonna put the center of this either one either that one or the other one and again shift click this I'm gonna make them coincident so now however I size this guy uh, it remains centered on that and it will point at the center of the vase and now this is an artistic thing you know how big do I really want it you know you can play with the, the size uh, any way you like I'll pick a size okay now I've got a size uh, I'll accept that and uh, we're ready to sweep so we'll go up to features uh, swept boss or base choose that uh, 3d sketch and you will see at the top as expected it points at the center here the same cannot be said however for the bottom notice it's pointing at a skew angle uh, and uh, fortunately there is a way to fix that I'll go to specify twist value and if you notice I'll start increasing it and it's 
turning such that it eventually will point at in the direction I want it. Let me get this oriented so I can get a good sense. Uh, again, this is an approximation. I have a point at about the center. I'll accept that and there's my nice little sweep. Okay, now it looks like I have a bit of a gap over here. Um, that's fairly readily correctable. In the sweep I'll open up the 3D sketch, edit the sketch, and I'm going to drag that bottom point down away a little bit so it intentionally will overrun the bottom of the vase. So I've got this big old uh, tail down there. We're going to be cutting that away shortly anyway. But here I am with a very nice uh, vein that uh, is uh, around the edge of the, the vase. Um, before going too much further, um, we'll talk about what's the rationale here. In order to achieve this look, where the, uh, the, the veins taper and come in coincident with the top and bottom edge, I will do that by virtue of a, an overall uh, revolve cut and remove material uh, from, and, and as you'll see, let's just go ahead and do it. You'll see how that, uh, that can work. So uh, one more time. I'm going to go, I'm going to make this, maximize this, uh, go into sketch, create yet another sketch, also on the front plane. Okay. And uh, this time I'm going to be creating a shape on the outside of the vase. Uh, it is also handy to do a cutaway. Um, let's uh, flip which one it is. Oop. Hold on a second. I can work over here anyway, but uh, I got to remember how to fit. Oh, there we are. I want that view right there. Okay, great. So I'm going to create a uh, a taper for the outside here. Um, as before, I can use the uh, intersection curve here, and that'll give me the outside line. I definitely don't want the one on the other side, so I'm going to trim that away right now and that's gone. Okay. Um, this guy, um, we've done trimming. I'm going to offset this by whatever number I want, like 0.2. Have that come out there and I'll accept that. Now I don't really want either one of these lines as my revolve cut. These are just reference points. So I'll click on this, shift click on this, and make them both for construction. Now I'm about to create the, the line that I really want. It's a spline. I'll click on spline, start, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Start up here, go to there, and now I'm going to trace the this curve and once I reach the bottom I'll let it do this and I'll escape out and you can see I've got this nice gentle sweeping shape that I'll use to cut away uh, the material. Uh, at the top, let's do some a line up at the top. We're going to we need to create a closed shape. So go up, out. Now in this case we need to go down, over, come up. Now I'm not quite ready yet. I need to convert an entity, which is the bottom curve, this guy right here, and that'll tell me how far to go up. Um, I'm going to make this a, um, uh, no, I'm going to use it just as it is. I was thinking I'd make it a construction line, but I'm, I am going to use part of it. So I'll go up to there, escape out. I got a little bit of trimming to do, get rid of the excess there. So now when I rotate this shape or revolve cut this around the outside. This is after the veins are created. I'll end up with a nice uh, tapered appearance. So I've got this sketch and uh, we're back where we were a moment ago. I will go back to the full view and finally we get to create the um, circular pattern and the pattern will be of 
the uh, sweep and the uh, the center line is this axis uh, I think 35 is a bit much I'll do 30 let's see how 30 would look 30 looks pretty good uh, we can change it later if we want to okay so there we are with the the veins and let's uh, use that cutaway that we created a moment ago to trim it back uh, to uh, the appropriate uh, shape so uh, we're going to do a revolved cut with this the line of uh, axis of revolution is the middle and in a moment there it is there's our lovely exterior shape and notice that the tails uh, blend quite nicely into the corners we're finally ready to uh, do what would have been the shell operation I can tell you from experience doing a shell right now will take forever and not work well because it'll fight with all these little uh, points at the top let's use the shape that create we created earlier we're going to do again a revolved cut we'll choose the copy of the interior the axis of revolution is the middle and we'll accept that and now we've hollowed out the vase uh, really well in fact uh, let's do a little bit of fillet work we'll do a fillet down in the lower corner uh, make it a quarter inch or so 25. also I don't want this sharp edge up here let's finish this fillet and do a fresh one we'll do another fillet up here right there a uh, quarter inch is too too radical I'll go to point one let's say and we'll let that do it now we have a nice rounded edge there we've cut away all the veins and uh, other than uh, exporting this to an STL file we are essentially ready to 3d print I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thank you for watching